Szerintem más, más. Hey everyone, Finny here. Um, just a quick intro, I've just found all this footage um, that I took a, a few weeks ago, so it, a few of the comments I make are a bit out of sequence with, with what's going on in the actual world. So, um, without further ado, here's the video. Happy Homebrew Wednesday everybody. It's Finny here from Finny's Homebrew Emporium, uh, and today we're doing a rather special beer, uh, because um, those that used to follow us um, on our Facebook page, we used to ask for like a special ingredient each month and um, so because we're almost finishing you know, up here and um, we thought we'd give it one last go and we got um, oysters so I'm going to do a combination of that and then you know the, the inventory beer so the inventory beer was basically shove everything in which I've pretty much done I left out one of the bags which was uh, caramel and um, light crystal just because the specialty malts were building up a wee bit too much, so I just dropped that out, but everything else went in, so, um, bear with me, Ooh. I'll try and get you set, there we go, so I have got, um, 3.6 kg of Gladfield's Ale malt, um, I've got 1.2 kg of, uh, Pilsner, like German vitamin Pilsner, that we had spare as well, um, so that's taken the place of the bit of the crystal. So I've got 660 grams of light crystal, uh, about just under a kilo of Munich. Uh, we don't have the caramel. Uh, five, so half a kilo of black malt, half a kilo of carafa two, uh, half a kilo of brown malt, 380 grams of smoked Manuka smoked malt, uh, 250 grams of caroma, and 200 grams of gladiator. So all that is currently, yeah, take your hit sitting in these two bags. So normally when I do a bit I only have one of these full. So now I've got two. Um, and in here I have got 25 litres of water. Now what my plan is, is because I don't think there's enough room for that and that. So I'm going to scoop out a jug um, of the water. Um, so take about three litres out, bung all the malt in, and then I've got you know a bit of that I can pour in at any point when it's starting to get really hard to to, to do the you know the mash and um, it's gonna be a nightmare trying to fit all this in I think it's about nine, eight and a half kg of grain um, in total and they reckon the grain powder you can get nine in. so it's a little bit close and what I'm going to do is set the mash I've got my um, salts in here because this is such a dark beer I'm gonna try and bring that mash pH back up and um, so the residual alkalinity is so, well you need to be so high, there's quite a lot of um, calcium, I think, or whatever needs to go in. So I've got in 20, the 23 litres I'll use, uh, two and a half grams of Epsom salts, uh, 2.9 grams of calcium chloride, uh, nine grams of baking powder, baking soda, baking powder, so that. Baking soda, um, NaSO4 and 4.8 grams of chalk. So I'll rehydrate that. Um, and halfway through I'll probably bung it in, so at least it's in there. And then once that reset going, um, it will just hopefully move it all around um, because we're gonna need it, get that pH back up. Otherwise, pH will be too f too low um, and we'll get you know incomplete conversion and, and all that sort of thing. So, and then once I get this set up, I'm gonna mash for at least an hour and a half because um, it's such a grain, big grain bill. It's going to take longer to do because I want good efficiency, um, and I'm also probably going to halfway through stop the pump, take the top off, give it a stir, uh, and reset the mesh. Um, so you know, hopefully, we're getting that complete conversion, complete circulation through everything. So I best get on with mashing. I might try and set the camera up to see so you can watch me try and mash in because I think it's going to be quite funny. But um, if I don't, if or if I don't get the shot. Hopefully you'll see us in the boil and me shucking some oysters.
So what I've done, which is, seems to have helped loads, I've just set up the, um, you can see there, the uh, the reser car. Um, and you can see it's so much easier to, to use this at the moment. So what that's done really, let me just turn it off now, the water that was underneath that hadn't been used has been recirculated back onto the top. And it just meant we've got loads more liquor that hadn't had any, you know, anything put into it just yet. Um, and it sent it round to the top and it helped loads. Helped with the rehydration, helped with thing, and but oh, as you can see we're getting really close to the top. But that was that was beautiful. See, now we've still got plenty of liquor to be able to sort of get all the mash in and... So the mash was pretty successful. We had um, we got pretty good conversion. The um, I think the pre boil was 1065 and we're supposed to be 1071 or something like that. And I mean that maybe it's really hard to get a total uh, mixture of the top runnings, you know, the top and the last runnings, you know, with the bottom bit. But we've got a big, lovely. Oh look at that! It's going to be beautiful. So what we've done already is added in just 10 grams of Ella. Um, I'm going to use... Oh, try and get it back on. I'm going to use Ella through the boil um, with some Jester um, and then some Centennial, I think, just to mix up, use up what I've got. Um, so, in the boil as well... Are these bad boys? The oysters. So ideally, I would have been able to get uh, shelled ones because then we could have used the shell at the start of the boil, um, and then the, the other bits towards the end. Um, but that lot, I'll probably just put in at about 15-20 minutes to the end of the boil, uh, and just let them let them go. Um, might try one afterwards. I don't know. See if we get some unsuspecting customers to do it for us. Um, but yeah, for now, um, I'll just, I've still got to figure out how much, um, how much hops I'm going to do, but it's going to be a 120 minute boil, so, um, there's plenty of time to figure that out. Um, at the moment, I'm just worried about boil overs, and so I've got my trusty boil over kit, where you just literally just, you know, spray it on top, and that just kills that boil surface, and and with a bit of stirring, you know, you should be able to get through it pretty quickly. So, I'll carry on with this, and then hopefully we'll be able to film some hot drops um, and pitch and yeast at the end. So, we'll catch you at those. Right, yeah, we've now been boiling for, oh, best part of two hours. We've got 15 minutes left in the boil, so it's time for some oysters. So, here we go. Hopefully you see what's going in. We're adding the salt salty brine as well just to give it um you know um that salty texture and um, it'll add a bit more bitterness but uh, and the meat should give it some mouthfeel apparently so um hop wise we've been using ella every 10 minutes since 60 minutes up until 20. Uh, we did a big drop of columbus it's about sorry big 45 grams at 30 minutes to go we just put 40 grams of jester in and at two minutes to go, we'll give it um, probably 80 grams of centennial. So just using up those bags that we had. Um, and of course, the, the oysters are going in at, right now at 15 minutes. So it's starting to come back to the boil, by the looks of it. Um, I'm hoping you'll get to see some, some booger action as they come up and around in the boil.
they don't seem to be. Alright. Fine. So, yeah, we've got another 15 minutes. Um, we've boiled from 30 down to hopefully about 20... Or, no, 1, 2, 3, 4, 24. So by the time it's cooled down, um, so we've probably boiled off a good 4 or 5 litres. Um, so hopefully that, you know, condensed it nicely and we'll get up to that 1090 original gravity that we're looking for. So um, hopefully we'll come back um, when it's going into the fermenter uh, and I'll show you the yeast um, we've got to use it. Oh, there goes one. I don't know if you can spot the odd one. Oh, there comes one. Yeah, there's another. <laughs> it's like a little sport. Cool. Right, I've seen the, the yeast edge. We're finally transferring. Um, you may can tell by the mess around everywhere. Bits of crap everywhere. Um, a bit of a weird, like, I just couldn't get the flow going through the coil. I thought, oh, okay, you know, it's probably 150 odd, 200 grams of hot's gone into the boil. Perhaps the filter's clogged or something. Um, but, so, like, I couldn't get anything out of it. So I thought, well, I'll test, I'll put the fly sparge thingy back on and see if I could just pump out, you know, without having the pressure of having to go through the coil. And try and pump it out from that, and it worked straight away, no problem. So, there must have been some sort of blockage in the coil somewhere. Because, once I did that and then sorted everything and put it back on, it's now going fine. So, oh, that's what's been going there. So, it's been at sort of 90 degrees for an extra probably half an hour, 40 minutes, while sorting serving people as well. So, um, hopefully, it's not over bitted it too much. Um, but it's going. I mean, it is black, it is dark, dark beer. Right, and um, and the yeast, the yeast is here. Here it is. This is um, a lot of um, the Burton Ale yeast, I believe, and uh, WL23 White Labs from the famous brewing town of Burton upon Trent, England. Um, it provides delicious, small fruity flavours like apple, clover, honey, and pear. So basically, it's what I've got left over when I did. Um, a beer with my wife the other week, uh, the pair, English pair with Jester. Um, so obviously fermented a 23 litre batch, we've got ooh, a good 500 ml of, of nice healthy yeast that's only um, poured it into there about um, a week, week and a half ago. So that should rip into it. I'll decant off most of that, give it a good spray with Star Sen. Um, and get it into here and unfortunately because at the moment this is my fermenting fridge and check it out it's full of beer this is all the beer for the uh, great kiwi beer festival competition well most of it so i can't put it in there and um, so it's going to have to go into the corridor and um, with no temp control um so uh we'll see how that goes so it's Thankfully, the corridor out the back here um, is normally a lot cooler than, than the rest of them at the moment. Today, it's 13 degrees. So, um, hopefully, as long as I can get this down quite, you know, as far as I can. With the groundwater temperature, groundwater's still around that 18 degree mark. Um, so, oh, you know, it's in the lack of the gods, really. But um, this brew has only really cost us 28 bucks for the item. Um, for the oysters. So, yeah, we can't wait for that. And we're going to age it quite a lot. Um, yeah, so it's in the can, as they say. Um, I will probably set up a, um, a, a, a overflow pipe thingy blow up because um, with all these fermentables, this could get cranky. So, I'll see what. Um, what gravity we get to, um, and then might use some muscovado sugar um, after a couple of two, couple of three days in the uh, in the fermenter to give it an extra boost. Trying to get it around that ten percent. Okay, there we go. We'll see. Uh, and that'll do for us for this week. If we don't see you next Wednesday.
good luck with the Great Kiwi Beer Festival homebrew competition, and and hopefully I will take some uh, footage of March Fest, and um, when we're getting up to all sorts of fun stuff. So um, take care. See you soon. Hello again. I know this is this video is dragging on a bit, so I'll dead quick. Uh, just a few bits to recap on what happened after uh, the last bit there. Um, so I did actually ended up taking it home. The, the temperature was up to like 24 um, and with all those fermentables it was only going to get higher and we would have had a real fast crappy ferment. So I took it home, um, put it in the fermentation fridge until it got down to, um, I think it set it at 17, 18, somewhere around there. Uh, and then did the pitch, give it a big old shake and then did a slow sort of ramp up um, for, the, for the main, for that initial fermentation which went seemed to go really well. Um, then uh, the pre-boil, uh, sorry, the, um, the gravity was only like 1080 instead of 1090, so I ended up taking, um, boiling up half a kilo of molasses um, in about a litre or two of water and adding that into a, into a carboy and then racked the beer off and into, the, um, into that carboy. So it's, we've still got about 21, 22 litres uh, and it's just sort of sitting, you know, just slowly bubbling away now and finishing off. Um, and yeah, it was slow transfer. What I found out once I finally got everything out and cleaned everything, um, the cap that's on the end of the um, filter in the bottom of the grain father, I'd knocked off. Um, so it was just sucking everything through. So all the hops, all the bits and bobs. And, uh, so that's why it's such a slow trying to go through everything because it was just fighting itself. So um, I had to keep an eye on that because it fell off on the latest batch I've just done as well so I don't know if it's just me not putting it on properly or if it's slowly worked itself loose or what I don't know so thanks for watching if you're still watching you're probably 20 minutes in or something well done um and hopefully um we'll see you very soon take care and enjoy your beers